Here are some tips on how to landmark a tough lap coli. This particular case had a percutaneous cholecystostomy tube and there seems to be minimal inflammation now, but even these cases can be very challenging and dangerous. Once the field is clear, the anatomy becomes evident. There is an optical illusion of Hartman's pouch being here. This is incorrect, as I believe Hartman's pouch is actually about here. You can see the distance between these two areas and the illusion created by the inflammation near the cystohepatic triangle. This can be very misleading and can lead to biliary injuries, and we'll walk through where I think key anatomic landmarks are. This is the fundus of the gallbladder. Sometimes this is the only identifiable landmark in tough cases. This is the sulcus of Rouvier corresponding to the right posterior sectoral duct and pedicles. This is the junction of the cystic plate and hilar plate where the bile duct likely will bifurcate. And this is the insertion of the hilar plate into the umbilical fissure. Note the very short distance in this particular case. That is often a very ominous finding. In this case, this is the line of safety between the sulcus of Rouvier and the cystic plate hilar plate junction. I call this a line of safety and I endeavor to never dissect before this line in any laparoscopic cholecystectomy. These reliable landmarks can be very helpful, but the duodenum and anterior surface of the porta hepatis is also a very important landmark as it can keep you away from the biliary duct as well as vital portal structures in the duodenum itself. So once we have these landmarks clear, let's go back to the original impression of where landmarks might be. If we assumed this was the Hartman's pouch area, therefore this area would correspond to the cystic duct area. Remember, the duodenum is right here. So you can see we are extremely low. And if we bring in our line of safety, we can see how dangerously close to a biliary injury we could be if we endeavored to dissect in this area of an optical illusion. Using the anatomic landmarks, we can keep ourselves out of trouble. So how do we go about doing this operation safely in the face of these optical illusions? Well, let's go back to where we think Hartman's pouch is, well above the sulcus of Rouvier, and think about the concept of the shield of McKelm oil. This is the fat and peritoneum overlying the cystohepatic triangle. We should not dissect in this area unless we feel confident that a critical view of safety can be obtained. If it can't be obtained, we should look at other means of safely performing the operation. Clips should never be fired anywhere near this area unless a critical view of safety has been definitively obtained. This is a very important and core concept. So now it may be tempting to do other approaches such as a top-down approach or fundus-down approach. This starts at the fundus and works its way down, but I think this is a very dangerous approach. As you can see, the dissection is leading directly to this critical junction between the cystic plate and hilar plate. This is where the right biliary pedicle and left biliary pedicles will be, and this often results in biliary injuries, and I do not recommend this approach in such cases. So what else can we do? Well, in these cases, I always like to come back to this two-dimensional concept of the line of safety. Now, I don't know if someone else has ever described this, but this is something that I use and teach my trainees. The dissection should begin well above this line of safety and occur in a counterclockwise direction. This way, we always know where the biliary pedicles are and we stay above them. We should never go anywhere near or below the line of safety in this format of dissection. This allows a very effective means of mobilizing the majority of the gallbladder. And in some cases, this allows us to complete a total cholecystectomy safely with a critical view of safety. So we start the dissection in this fashion. For this video, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit as the purpose of this is for landmarking. As you can see, we've opened up the gallbladder and we're well above the line of safety. A subtotal approach has been taken and we can see the insertion of the cystic duct into the Hartman's pouch area of the gallbladder. As we clean up the surgical field, let's take a moment to revisit the landmarks that we have discussed already. The sulcus of Rouvier is clearly in view, and if we want to use another important landmark, we refer to the junction of the cystic plate and the hilar plate. Our line of safety, therefore, is here. We are well above the line of safety. In order to complete this operation safely, I will endeavor to bluntly dissect the posterior wall of the gallbladder off of the cystic plate 
to allow me to close the gallbladder remnant as I'm very close to the cystic duct in this particular case. Here I have been able to do this successfully and ligated the small gallbladder remnant with a endo loop. I prefer an endo loop because it allows me to very precisely close the gallbladder without picking up any tissue that is unwanted. Likewise, I think it provides very good hemostasis on the gallbladder wall. Uh, you may have noticed a couple of clips high up on the gallbladder fossa. This was for hemostasis on some oozing tissue from the liver bed. So in summary, the key anatomy I like to review on every single lap coli is the sulcus of Rouvier and its relationship to the junction of the cystic plate and hilar plate. I always take note of the distance between the cystic plate and umbilical fissure as a very short distance in this area can be ominous and may suggest significant inflammation and a high risk of biliary injury. The concept of safe entry into the shield of McKellum oil is critical to all cholecystectomies, especially difficult ones such as this. In this particular case, the tissue in the cystohepatic triangle seemed very firm, woody, and hostile. I think, therefore, it's very important to minimize the use of cautery and use careful blunt dissection as much as possible. In general, in all cases, it's important to never fire clips anywhere near the cystohepatic triangle until a classic critical view of safety has been obtained. I use the line of safety and top of round approaches as a means of keeping me safe during laparoscopic operations. I did not really discuss the concepts of closing the gallbladder remnant versus leaving it open in subtotal cholecystectomy. That is a matter of some discussion and perhaps even debate, and maybe one of these days I'll get around to making a video about that.